The Lord be with you. Good morning, and I welcome each and every one of you to worship on this Trinity Sunday at Bellevue United Methodist Church. Whether you are worshiping with us here in person or joining us online, we are glad that you chose Bellevue to be your place of worship this day. As we gather today on this Trinity Sunday, as I mentioned, this is the one Sunday of the liturgical calendar that worship isn't centered on an event in the life of Jesus or in the life of our faith or a season built around that, but on a theological understanding of the Trinity. And it is my hope today that as we gather that we might gain and leave here with a little bit more clarity and understanding as it comes to the Trinity. And I'll be upfront and honest with you and say I don't have all the answers. And I'm, I'm not going to offer you the easiest way to understand it. But what I am going to invite you to do today is to enter into the midst of the holy dance of the Godhead. That instead of trying to understand it today, that we may try to be a part of it. And as we gather today, I do want to lift up a few announcements. Um, one is, you've probably seen it in the newsletter, um, we are gearing up for Vacation Bible School. For it'll be our, our dates are July 14th through the 17th. Um, and in the newsletter, there are two links that I need you to, to be aware of. One is for registration for children. So if you want to share that as far and wide as you can, you can do so. Um, and the earlier that we can get people to sign up, the better, because having um, missed a year, we're not really sure what to expect. Um, and so as we try to do that, that would be helpful for us to kind of begin to gauge um, our participation. The other link that I need you to know about is for volunteers. If you are willing to volunteer and wanting to volunteer, um, go to that link. It's in the newsletter. Um, fill out that form and it will get back to the office. Um, there's a place for you just to put your name and if you have a preferred place to help and volunteer and serve, um, and we will do our best to get you into that spot. Um, if you have any questions about VBS, um, Liz and I um, can help answer those and on June the 9th immediately following worship we will gather in the small fellowship hall for a volunteer meeting to hopefully begin to get on the same page um, and then we can watch for emails and things going forward. Also as we gather on this um, weekend we remember along with our nation um, Memorial Day tomorrow um, and those who lost their lives in action fighting for our country. And today the flowers on the table are provided by Joe Cottingham in remembrance of Mark Bundy, who was killed in action and on January 24th of 1970 in Vietnam, a brother of the Charlie Company. And so we remember and our hearts are with those families of those who lost someone in action fighting for our nation. And today as we gather, it is my prayer that we may enter into this space, that we share together a time of prayer, a time of lifting our voices, a time of hearing the word. And so I invite you to open yourself up to the Spirit's nudgings this day as we listen for God's call.
morning. If you will please join me in the call to worship, your response is in the bulletin. God, sometimes we show up to worship ready to encounter your presence. We know you are always with us. Sometimes we catch glimpses of you at home, work, or school in a smile, in a gentle breeze, in the joy of being together. But God, we hesitate to encounter you in all of your glory, afraid to be overwhelmed by your love and holiness. Ready our hearts today to encounter more of your glory, your love, holiness, and glory that is always present with us. I invite you to stand, if you're able, and sing with us hymn number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. God, our loving God, you are the surprise from whom all discoveries grow, the delight of whom each victory sings, the joy to whom all lasting pleasures flow, the search out of whom all science springs, the truth who surfaces when all seems lost, the love who will not count the cost. Creating God, high beyond our understanding, we worship your mystery. Redeeming God, deep beyond our deserving, we worship your mystery. Inspiring God, near beyond our perceiving, we worship your mystery. Amen, and again we say, Amen. As we gather today, I invite you to join with me in our prayer for illumination as found in your bulletin. 
as we pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. I invite you to stand for our scripture reading this morning. It is found in the book of Isaiah. We'll be reading the first eight verses of chapter 6. Hear now the word of God. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew over to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. And the seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'll invite our kids to come forward for our children's moments. It is so good to see all of y'all down here this morning. I want to ask y'all something. Have you all ever made a mistake? Yeah. We've all made mistakes at times, haven't we? You want to tell what your mistake was? You don't have to. You can if you want to. Okay. Um, one time, one time I, one time I accidentally, one time I accidentally, um, I accidentally, I accidentally colored, I accidentally, like, dropped the, the, um, the, the eraser for the, for the shock, and some of it got on the floor. Yeah, and it made a little bit of a mess, and we had to clean it up, yeah. Sometimes we, oh, you got some, we got some mistakes to tell. <laughs> Confession is good for the soul. Um, I accidentally colored the wrong thing that I was going to color. Yeah, that's sometimes a mistake, isn't it? We want to color something one color, and we grab the wrong crayon, and we mess up sometimes, don't we? Um, when I was writing once, I accidentally wrote one thing over again. Yeah, so sometimes we, we just make little mistakes here and there, right? Well, what is one way, if we were writing something, what's one way we might fix our mistake? 
erase it. So I have a little pencil here. So if I was writing something and I messed up, what could I do? I could just erase it. Erase it. I'd just take it and rub it away, right? And it's gone. Can't even see where I had wrote it, right? You know, sometimes we do that. We find things that we, we have in life and we find out we may have messed up. We may say something to someone that we shouldn't have said or we may do something to somebody that we shouldn't do or we may make just small little innocent mistakes. There's all numbers of things that we do that sometimes we mess up. Well, as we heard our scripture a while ago from the Old Testament, what we heard was we have a picture of this guy named Isaiah. He's an Old Testament prophet. And Isaiah was standing in the midst of this room. He had this vision, and he was in the midst of this throne room up in the heavens with God. And he saw God sitting on this throne, and there were these winged creatures there. And he said, who am I? He said, I'm human. I mess up. I've made mistakes before. And who am I to be in here? He actually said, I think I'm lost. And sometimes we just kind of feel lost, don't we? And we don't know what to do or what to say. And so what we can do is what we hear in, in the scripture from Isaiah is that one of the, the winged creatures went and got a coal out of a fire and came and touched it to his lips. And we might think that might hurt or burn us, but it didn't. It made him clean. And he could hear what God was saying. And God was saying, I need somebody to go for me, to go and to tell people about my love and to share with people about who I am. And Isaiah raised his hand and he said, God, here I am, send me, use me. And so what I hope we can hear today and every day is that it's okay when we mess up because God is with us and God, God will, if, we're, if we ask, when we ask for forgiveness, God blots away our, our mistakes and our sins and that we are made whole because of God's love for us, but that we can each and every day offer ourselves to God and say, here I am, that we can be bold just like Isaiah and say, here I am, Lord, send me, use me. Can y'all pray with me this morning? All right. Loving God, we thank you for this day. And we pray that you help us to be bold as Isaiah, to say, here I am. Send me. Send me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all can go back and sit with your parents, okay? Would you join me in singing hymn number 79, Holy God, we praise thy name. We'll sing stanzas one through four.
you would, please pray with me and for me. Loving God, we give thanks for the reading and the hearing of your word this day. Word that offers light and life to us all. And God, today as we gather, it is my prayer that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts may be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's an old parable that's told of a community of ducks that one Sunday morning they woke up and they put on their Sunday best and they waddled off to duck church to hear the duck preacher. During the service, the duck preacher spoke eloquently of how God had given the ducks wings with which they could fly. That with those wings, that there was nowhere that they could not go. There was no God-given task that they could not accomplish. That with those wings, they could soar into the very presence of God's self. As the duck preacher preached on, there were shouts of amens that were quacked throughout the duck congregation. And at the conclusion of the service, as the ducks were leaving, they commented on how wonderful the message they had heard was, and then they waddled back home. I'm afraid that at times we are an awful lot like the duck church. We come to church. We sing the songs. We pray the prayers. We hear the word. But when the service is over, we leave the same way we came in. We leave unchanged and unaffected. Well, friends, I want to give you a bit of good news this morning, and the good news is it doesn't have to be that way. I believe that every time that we gather in this holy space, every time that we gather here in this church, every time that we gather, that God has something in store for us. And it does, has nothing to do with me, or the music, or the stuff that goes into preparing for worship, but more so where our hearts are when we enter into the time of worship. Because I can tell you I have preached more than my fair share of lousy sermons. But praise be to God that there is something that I like to refer to as this holy space between the the area of this room of where leaves the words leave my mouth and they find your ears that God can do some amazing things. I pray every Sunday that God will open us up. That God will open our hearts, that God will open our ears, that we might hear what God has to say to us. That we will be bold enough to allow God to be at work in our lives. And so as we gather here today, I pray that we can leave here having had an experience and an an encounter with God Almighty. Because I love singing the songs, and I love seeing my friends, and I love hearing God speak to me as much as the next person here. But somewhere in our walk with God, we have to move beyond simply singing the songs and praying the prayers and hearing the words and move into deep and abiding relationship with God. I'm not saying we have to give those things up, we have to quit those things, that we don't do those things anymore. But what I am saying is that we got to do more than just come to church on Sunday and nod our heads. This is the Methodist amen, if you don't know that. We have to do more than just coming and nodding our heads and singing the songs and hearing what was prepared and going back home and waiting to come back again the next week. Because hear me this morning when I say that we can be the best at all of that stuff. 
but there isn't any amount of all of that other stuff that is going to do us a bit of good if we don't first learn how to live and walk for God. The only way that we walk with God is to actually walk with God. The only way that we can live for God is to actually allow God to live within us. What I'm saying is, is that we have to have those deep and abiding encounters with the holy. We have to enter into his presence, not just corporately together, but personally as well. And as we come to our scripture passage today, and as we think about our own lives, there's this idea that we, we've talked about, we've sung about it a lot this morning, and it's this idea of holiness. Of what does it mean to be holy and enter into God's presence? Am I holy? We hear this in Isaiah this morning. And I'll invite you to think for just a moment, and you can answer this question for yourself as well. But I want you to think about your own life. I want you to think about the church. I want you to think about our community, our world in which we live in. And I want you to ask yourself, are we living the most holy lives that we can? That's what we hear in Isaiah this morning. As you take a look, at your life, at the life of the church, are we the most holy that we can be? As you look at the world, is the world the most holy that it can be? My answer, if you're interested in it, is, friends, we got a lot of work to do. The God is there, the God is at work, but we need to sometimes bring a little bit more effort. We need to bring a little bit more to the table because we're not always the most holy as individuals, as the church, as the body of Christ. We are imperfect. The world is not holy. But I also think that we have done ourselves a disservice in the life of the church, and we have grown afraid of the word holiness. We don't really like that word. We, we might sing about it. We might lift it up in worship. But oftentimes we try to, to rename it or look at it from another way and try to avoid using holiness. But I would dare say this morning that we need to be about the work of reclaiming the word holy for the kingdom of God. Because you see, holiness cannot be separated from us or from the church or from the world. And as we look upon the church, as we look upon our lives, what we long for and what I hear from the people in the church, what I hear from people outside of the church, is that we long for revival. We long for a reawakening. We long for a reimagining of what God can do in our very midst, whether it be individual or corporate, and most times both. We long for God to be at work doing something powerful and mighty. We pray for God to be at work in our midst. And so if we are going to be a people who seek to reclaim holiness, I need, think we need to make sure we have a pretty good understanding of what it means to be holy. Because for years, I think we have carried around holiness. We have treated holiness as something that we take with us. And we dare not let anyone else bother our holiness. Because if someone else bothers my holiness, then I might become unholy. It might become tainted. But instead of trying to keep our holiness to ourselves, 
doing our best to keep our lives or our faith from being tainted with the stains of the world upon it, what if instead of looking at holiness that way, we looked at holiness as the thing that helped to make us clean, to help remove the sin, the, 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 the sin from our lives? Where's my eraser? What if we look at it like an eraser? Jesus took these things serious throughout his ministry. As Jesus was going about ministry, he looked around and he saw the needs in the midst. And he touches them. And he wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty, whereas some of the religious elites walking among them did everything they could to avoid getting themselves and their hands dirty. So in essence, friends, what I'm trying to say this morning is that holiness is that thing that makes us clean, not something that we have to try to protect and keep clean, to make sure something happen, doesn't happen to it. Because I don't know about you, I don't know when the last time you might have engaged in ministry was, but let me tell you and assure you, ministry is messy. Evangelism is messy. Discipleship is messy. If you look at Jesus' life, Jesus in his ministry got his hands dirty on more than one occasion. Because Jesus reached out his hand and he touched the ones that society said ought not be touched. And Jesus sat down to table with those who others said, you ought not sit at the table and dine with them. And Jesus had conversations with people who it was not good to be seen having conversation with. And time and time and time again, he does it. Not because it's what the world would do. Not because it's what he had to do. And we remember that it was time and time and time again that the disciples, his closest friends, even got upset with him for doing some of these things. Because in essence, they could all get in trouble. But for me, I have to figure at some point in their ministry, in their walk with Jesus, they had to at least at some point think, well, you know what? We left our old jobs. We left our families. We left our homes. We left everything that we knew. So let's go ahead and see what he's going to do next. Let's jump in on this and see what's going to happen. Because what is exciting is that Jesus does these things, not because he has to, but because he's holy. He's worthy. In our passage from Isaiah this morning, it helps to drive, point, drive this drive this point home for us. Here we have Isaiah, young in his calling. And I can't imagine how frightening this vision he must have had was for him. For he is there in the midst of this throne room of God in the heavens, and he sees holiness sitting right there on the throne before him. And flying above him are these winged creatures, these seraphim, that are covering themselves out of humility of who God is and out of their mouths poor worship. Just a side note, let me just say that if, if things like unity and singing and worship aren't your thing, heaven might be a little bit of a shock. Because from what I read, it's less about mansions and crowns with jewels in them and more about what we offer to God. And so, as we gather today, as we hear Isaiah speaking to us, we get this glimpse of Isaiah saying, I am not worthy. He says, I am lost. How many of us have ever felt that way? Because I can say that I can echo his sentiment when he says, I am not worthy. Friends, as we hear Isaiah this morning, 
as we go back to the question of, am I holy? Is our world holy? Oftentimes what we find is that we are just in a mess. We can echo Isaiah's sentiments when he says, I am from a generation of unclean lips. And one of these seraphim, they fly over and they grab a coal from the fire and they come to Isaiah and they take that coal and they touch it to his lips. In effect, burning away all of that unworthiness. And all of a sudden now Isaiah is able to eavesdrop in on this conversation that God is having. And he hears God saying, who will go for me? Who is worthy and who can I send? And Isaiah says, send me. Here I am. Use me, Lord. For whereas moments ago he stood there unworthy, now he says, I will go and I will say these things that God will have me to say, knowing that they will probably not be easy things to say. Read Isaiah and you'll find out what some of those uncomfortable things he had to say were. He says, but I will stand up for what is right. And I will speak for God and I will pour holiness into a world that is not very holy. I at times like to think of holiness like a big bucket of bleach. That thing that makes white again. That thing that, that purifies. And I don't know about you, but whenever I have to use bleach on those rare occasions. I'm always very careful. I like to hold it out and open it very slowly and pour very slowly. It's not to get it on anything right. Everybody on the same page. When it comes to biblical holiness, we need not be so careful. We need to be pouring our holiness into this world, the holiness of God. We need to be prepared to pour it and pour it abundantly. If you're sitting there this morning, if you're thinking, what can I do within the life of the church to find God at work? We can begin to pray that God may stir up within us a sense of holy boldness. To be like Isaiah, to hear what's going on, to say, here I am, Lord, send me. To stir within each and every one of us that holy fire that we saw ignited last week at Pentecost. And that we can pray that maybe there might be a Pentecost spirit among us. That we might be a Pentecost people. Hoping to allow the Holy Spirit to burn within us. That we may go into the world around us to effect and enact real change. Now I'll speak. Throw a blanket statement of caution and say, be careful if that does become your prayer because the fire of the Holy Spirit is not easy to squelch. But I invite you to imagine for just a moment what it would look like if all of us prayed that prayer, if all of us became Pentecost people and moved into this community and offered the love of God in real and true and deep meaningful ways not afraid to get our hands a little dirty in the process knowing that God is with us and never more than a breath away so may we be holy people that live holy lives I invite you to think of what it is in your own life that you are seeking and maybe that is to mend a broken relationship. Maybe that's to be more motivated in the community. Maybe that's to, to grow your own spiritual disciplines in your own life. Maybe it's to spread the word of God in this community and around the world. Whatever it is that we're called to do, might we stand with that sense of holy boldness to go to do something, to do more, whatever it might be to no longer just waddle through life, but to stretch our wings and soar into what God has in store for us, this church, this community, and this world around us.
to no longer do the same old things that we've always done out of convenience, but to be brave enough to live into abundant life that God has in store for us. So I invite you all today, this week, whatever you need, to build yourself up to find the courage that only comes from God to live a life of holiness. To let the old be burned away and to live as God has called each and every one. To live and to be. For we pray all these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Travis. Would you turn in your faith we sing, hymn number 2039. We are going to sing stanzas 1 and 2 and 4 and 5. As we come to this time of the lifting the prayers of the people, we come and lift the needs of so many before us, those that have been spoken and shared here today, those that are on our prayer list. We come and lift the joys that we share as well as we praise God for all that God has given unto us as we enter into a time of prayer. Almighty God, known as wisdom before the dawn of creation, Lord Jesus Christ, perfect love made flesh, Holy Spirit of God ever present, come and be in our midst this day. We meditate upon the great and gracious plan with which you have brought to pass for the people like us should look beyond creation to worship you, the creator of all things. For in the beginning you created, you moved across the face of the deep, you brought out space and time and then substance, bringing forth life and the longing and the striving of all things. O hidden love of God, forgive us for the times in which we have taken for granted the mysteries that you bring to us. 
And forgive us all the more for the times where we thought that we had unraveled the mystery and knew it all. So God, be with us. Today, as we lift up the needs among us, God, be at work. Give comfort, hope, and healing. Bring peace and calm. Bring your spirit where it is needed. And Lord, we come and give thanks unto you for all that you do and have done, for the ways in which we see your work all around us. We pause this day as we give thanks. And Almighty God, let us not harbor anything in our hearts that might spoil our fellowship with you or one another. It is our prayer that you work with us and within us. And today as we gather, we join together our voices in the prayer in which your Son, our Lord and Savior, taught to his disciples as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we prepare to give of ourselves as our ushers make their way forward. We prepare to receive our morning's tithes and offerings.
Loving God, as we gather, we recall Isaiah's humbling encounter with your overwhelming presence. Like him, we're unworthy, yet grateful for glimpsing your glory. In stewardship, may our generosity reflect gratitude for your blessings. God is in discipleship, knowing and serving you. With every gift, we express our commitment to follow your call. May we humbly say, here I am, send me. Amen. If you will remain standing into the faith we sing, turn to him 2018, honor and praise. Brothers and sisters, go now in the blessed presence of the triune God who cleanses you, who calls you, and empowers you to be messengers of God's love in this world. So go in his love and in his mercy to do as he is called. Amen. Amen. 